Secondly, we will learn about the two main sciences of Arabic grammar. And thirdly, we will go over the kalima and its three types. So just to review quickly, um, the alphabet in Arabic is called Al-Huruf, Al-Huruf, al hijaiya And al hijaiya just means red. So these are the, the, the letters that are red. And so that's why they're called the alphabet. Um, let me put the, uh, the marks there for you. Al-Hurufu al hija Okay, and so this is the alphabet. Now, if you have learned these, then you'll know that most of these are consonants. Okay, and so then you might wonder, well, where are the vowels? The vowels in Arabic are expressed through something called Harakat. Okay, so we have Al Harakat. Let me write that in English. Al Harakat. And that's the main word that we're, that's the main term that we're going to be using. Although sometimes, for example, in academic language, they're known as diacritical marks, sometimes they're known as vowels. And sometimes they're known as just plainly ticks. Okay. Um, now, just to review these real quick, just in case you call them something different, I'll tell you what I call them and what most uh, Arab speakers call them is fatha, kasra, and dhamma. And fatha is a tick on top, kasra is a tick on the bottom, and dhamma is a little nine. Uh, above the letter. So for example, if I have the letter ba and I put a dhamma on it, it becomes bu. If I had the letter ba and I put a fatha on it, it becomes ba. And if I have the letter ba and I put a kasra on it, it becomes b. Easy enough. Okay, so now that we're done reviewing the, uh, the, the alphabet, let's move on to our main subject, and that is the topic of grammar. Now, if you were to ask any Arabic speaker about learning grammar, they wouldn't be too happy about learning grammar. It's kind of the same in English. You know, if we can uh, speak English and we've been speaking it all our lives, then we know when something is correct and we know when something's wrong and we don't need to learn grammar just to know that. But uh, because Arabic has a different sentence structure, because it is a different language, and because you need to learn the grammar in order to be able to decipher each and every sentence you come across, it's quite important. But your mentality while learning grammar should not be, oh, I'm learning grammar, I can't stand this. No, your mentality should be that each and every sentence I come across is a puzzle and I have to solve this puzzle. Or each and every single sentence is a challenge that I'm undertaking. And if you take it as a challenge and if you take it as a puzzle, then not only will you learn the grammar and be able to practice it, you'll even enjoy it. Because if you're like me, I enjoy solving puzzles and so that that really allowed me to enjoy uh, learning Arabic grammar. In grammar we have two main sciences. The first science is An-Nahu and the second science is As-Sarf. So we have An-Nahu, Ilmun nahu as it's called in Arabic and we have Ilmu sarf or the knowledge of Sarf. Okay, and excuse my handwriting, I know it's quite bad, but I'm still getting used to this software. Now, Nahu deals with this last vowel, this last haraka. Okay, and this is the first thing that we're going to be learning. And you'll understand the importance of this last symbol uh, when, we get, when we get to it. And in, in English, it is known commonly as syntax or Arabic, and, and it falls under grammar. And sarf, it deals mainly with verbs and what's called their morphology. Okay, and you can remember that because the main thing that sarf talks about is verbs morphing into each other or morphing into different conjugations. And so that's how you can remember that. Okay. 
So now let's move on to our first lesson in Arabic grammar. Ilmun Nahu is based on concepts and everything can be mapped out. So the first point on our map is the Kalima. Okay, and the Kalima, what is it? It's a word, not just any word, but a word that has meaning. It's a word with meaning, a word that conveys some kind of meaning. Okay, and so once you understand that, we can move on and say that a Kalima is categorized into three different types. Let's change the color. So you have Ism, you have Fi'l, and you have Harf. In English, there no ism is known as a noun. Fi'l is known as a verb, and harf is known as a particle or preposition. And so, in our next video, we'll be going into the different qualities of ism, fi'l, and harf, and that'll be in our next video. So, thank you all for watching, and I pray that you benefit.